Um, we'll bring this uh, meeting of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission on August 18th to um, a beginning at uh, 7.35. And uh, the first topic being public comment, not having received any. What date did you say? Excuse me? I think you said August 18th. You meant to say September 15th. You need to September. say September. Oh, I must have grabbed an old. I grabbed an old agenda. Um, so we are September 15th. Excuse me. Thank you, Sharon. Um, uh, and without any having received any email, or public comment, and no one here, we will uh, get right on to. Uh, welcoming uh, Anthony Genovese, the finance manager for the town of Woodbridge and uh, chief administrative officer, I think, also. Um, and um, with that, unless there's a question, no, we'll let you begin, Tony. Okay. So you want to just talk about we'll, some of the, address some of these questions? And yeah, I'd like to just go through the topics uh, one by one, if, okay. if you could. And Sure. So the first uh, is open space funding. And uh, the uh, town had historically uh, funded open space back. A, a lot was funded between uh, 97 and probably 03. There were, I think, three different bond issues that were done during that time. Uh, and there were a, a large number of um, properties purchased during that period. It was a very active period. Uh, some of the notable ones were uh, the Alleghe property, which was in 97, the Eldersley property, which was in 2000, uh, the Racebrook track, which was um, negotiated early and um, separated into three phases, primarily so that the town can apply for an open shed, a watershed, uh, open space watershed acquisition grant for each phase, which we did. Um, and we were successful in all three phases. Uh, I know an orange purchase there is in one phase. I believe they only got one grant for the purchase. So that was negotiated and phased. The water company was gracious enough to phase that over time, which was uh, 05, 06, and 09. We purchased each phase, and there was a we had the first right of refusal, I guess, if for some reason we didn't want to. Uh, but we did purchase all three phases. And so um, for some of these purchases, we um, used an open space watershed acquisition grant, which is a process with the state of Connecticut. And uh, you um, have a process to go through where you have to uh, fill out an application and you need appraisals for the property. And it's a competition type of grant, so there are a number of, um, you know, uh, items in the grant in terms of, you know, access to the space and population and other things. Um, and then, uh, so we've done that on occasion. We've received quite a few of those, actually. Um, we have the benefit of being close to a large population center. So, um, you know, when, when uh, we apply for those, uh, the fact that we're close to New Haven is helpful because it has access for a lot of people to use the, the open space. Um, so anyway, that's where a lot of that has, has happened. I so would anywhere in the town that has that's part of the watershed would that it, would that qualify for uh, those kinds of grants? The, that's the title of the grant. Although other other open space acquisitions apply also, it doesn't have to be watershed. Okay. Um, that's just you know that's part of the the grant um, title, but you can use other properties as well. Um, Tony, are those grants for towns? Connecticut towns, or are they for anybody? No, I believe they're also for, um, I'm not 100% certain, but I believe also for other entities, possibly. Okay. But I, I know a lot of towns apply for them. <clears throat> and uh, so there's a, there's a grant rounds. It used to be twice a year, and then it was once a year. And um, I believe DEP puts that out, and you so see you have to, you know, I'm sure it's on their website. September 30th, I think. Is that when it is? Deadline yeah. Yeah. This year. So, um, so that's that. That's a process of open space. Um, we have an open space fund. Typically, um, is one of two ways it was done historically. It was either um, 
I think early in the process, there was an amount borrowed for open space, where and there were maybe there were some some properties that were um, that were uh, that the town we, we don't wanted to acquire, but it was just sort of an amount that was that was borrowed, and then you can use that when an opportunity arises, because as you know, there's a process sometimes to borrow money, and and so um, you know sometimes that was done in advance so that you have access to the funds quicker. So when you did a <coughs> when you issued bonds, part of the proceeds from the bonds would be for open space, Correct. but not specify what space. Some, it sometimes, was. yeah, or other times, um, but, but you do have to specify if you want to purchase the property at a town meeting, so it sort of all depends on the timing of it. Um, but other times, like, um, you know, we borrowed money for the Eldersley property. That was one, one bond issue, I believe. I have a question. Yeah. So who does the legwork of that? So typically, when there's, the, so the, whenever the town is in, uh, discussions of uh, purchasing a, a piece of property. The first selectman's office is always the entity that negotiates on behalf of the town. So there's no other entity. It's the first selectman with, in conjunction with the board of selectmen. Uh, so that's the entity that's always the lead negotiation. Oftentimes, however, there are partners that um, help cooperate or help to either bring a property to to um, to the, the first selectman or you know. Uh, can help with some of the um, background and some of the discussions, but it's always through the first selectman's office, if that makes sense. So oftentimes there's partners, uh, one time it was the Trust for Public Land, or the Parks Association, or others. We've, we've um, also joined with other groups to combine funds for different purchases. I think it was the one on, on um, Shepherd, behind Shepherd's Farm on the top on the ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, I'm not sure of the property the property address, but I know it was the town. It was like three entities involved in that. We all contributed. <clears throat> so sometimes, as you know, if the property owner wants to sell to the town, it makes it a lot easier because there's, you know, usually a, a helpful negotiation. A, a clarification on the, the bonding again. Yes. The, the, the bonding in the past was done without a named property, but uh -huh. what then? Then when you, the property was identified, then it had to go to a town meeting correct. for the use of even those correct. bonded right. for that property. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> right. So you still have to go to the county and authorize the appropriation right. to spend that amount of money. Okay. And, and when was the last time bonding you think, was done? Um, let me say it was 03, I believe. We borrowed funds in 03, if I remember correctly, because we um, had to use those funds for the phase phases of the race book track. Yeah. And I think some of it for the 19, here it is, 1966 Litchfield Turnpike, I think is the address. Oh. Well, I, I imagine that bonding in the race book track was <coughs> post identification of that as an opportunity. Right, that's correct. But, but, and did I hear you say that bonding has been done in anticipation that there would be opportunities? Sometimes, if, okay. if, if, um, you know, if, the, if we're going to go out to bond for, let's say, $10 million for school, the fees to borrow money are, um, there's no extra cost. It's like a fixed amount for bond counsel, for a financial advisor, for access to the markets, for movies, for a rating agency. Okay. It was like a process, and there's fixed fees for all of that. Yeah. So if you're going to borrow $10 million, say, for a school or for a, for a building project, it doesn't cost you anything extra to borrow for another purpose, but to borrow just a million or two million dollars and spend the same eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars in fees, you know, some of usually you try to but do them at the same time. But the cost mm -hmm. of that would be carrying that loan, where, right? Where with the interest ten years until you find a property. You want yeah, to buy. so that's typically you, you don't. Yeah. You know, I think at that time it was done because there was a lot of sort of there's a lot of activity. activity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but typically there when there's not a lot, of, a lot of activity, it's usually you identify the purchase. Okay. You know. Is there any bond money now that is tagged for that that hasn't yet been spent? Uh, we have an open space fund. It's got a balance of seventy-two thousand dollars, seventy-two two fifty-four to be exact. So that's remaining funds from transactions, and. Um, you know, you can use that for open space purchases or for items related to an open space purchase, like um, 
we did a, um, we used a little bit of it to do an appraisal of, it's a property Nugent. over, yeah, it's at Nugent, right, you remember, <laughs> yep, and so um, it didn't ultimately happen, but we used it for that purpose. Could you use it for a conservation easement as opposed to a full purchase? That's a good question. I have to look at the um, the bond uh, resolution that was um, adopted at the time, but possibly, and, but possibly. That money is of two types, I understood, or at least two types, bond leftover and grant leftover. Right, right. So typically, we use the grants, the way we like to look at it is we use the grants first because oh, they're, okay. um, mm -hmm. you know, they're um, state funds, so it's typically remaining bond funds. I mean, that's usually the last item left. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this last part would be mostly bond funds? Yeah. <coughs> so that's the, um, the, that's sort of the um, open, space, open funding. space funding process. And so, you you know, you, if, you had a, if you had a property in mind, we would, you know, try to time the funding, assuming it gets approved, um, with um, if we had any other bond issues to do. Do we have any other bond issues now? There's um, currently um, a build, building committee for the center building, which is in its infancy, so that's probably a, way, that's a ways off. Um, there's a building committee for Beecher School that was just formed. That's probably closer because of... Um, some of the uh, needs that they have, but um, nothing is imminent. Okay. My, my last question is on the 72,000. Um, the expenditure of that requires not a town meeting, but that would Does be not, required. town meeting already authorized it when they authorized the bond issue. Right, yeah. so they require approval of the selectmen. Correct, yeah. And the expenditure. Could that be uh, used to clean up any contamination on any of the open spaces, the 72,000? I'm not sure. I'd have to look and see if it said ma maintain open space or it's, it all depends on how you write the resolution that's approved at the town meeting um, as to how you can authorize, you know, how you can spend the funds. That's sort of, so whenever you do a town meeting, there's a resolution that that's where the authorization comes to spend. So usually it's written up in such a way. Uh, I would just have to check and see what clarity there is in that, if that's possible. I can report that back to you. Great. Yeah. Is there a, an authorization process to apply for a grant? So say we identified something we thought would be a good open space and we decided to apply for a grant, would we have to get authorization from the Board of Selectmen to do that? Or? Yeah, typically the, um, you work with the, the First Selectman's office and, and we would read the grant and we would you know, understand what the grant is and what requirements there are. Sometimes you need a resolution to apply from the selectmen. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's a simple application. Sometimes it isn't. It sort of depends on the grant, and um, it depends on the requirements of the grant. So we could, we would work hand in hand. Yeah. With, so if you have those any, first selectmen's office, correct. And, and it would be usually be it would be me or uh, a, a, once we hire a new assistant administrative officer. Um, which is imminent, hopefully, uh, that uh, that person would also work closely with me on that. And do they have time to do that kind of stuff, or do you have time? I mean, so usually I do. Um, I work on all the larger grants, the um, um, whether they're steep grants or um, we've got a grant, a sidewalk grant that we just got. Um, some of the smaller grants are administered by departments. So, uh, like the police department, they administer a lot of their own grants because, okay. you know, they're routine types yep. of the grants they get a lot. Or um, sometimes we help outside agencies with grants. As, as Barbara knows, we help the Amity Woodbridge Historical Society often. Um, they do a lot of grant work and sometimes we help them with that. So it sort of depends on the size and the nature of the grant. Mm -hmm. but so because I'm so new to this and don't understand it much, if sure. we had something we thought might be an appropriate grant, mm -hmm. we work amongst ourselves and kind of clarify it, and then we come to you and who are the administrative assistant, and you could help guide us to Correct. improve we, we, it. Right. And then we'd go back, and, and it would be a back and forth thing until it got to the place where we'd pre present it to the selectmen, but they'd have some idea of it. 
Right. Beforehand. And if it's a small grant, if it's just like a five thousand dollar grant to improve trails, say, uh, that probably won't need to go to the selectmen. But if it's a four hundred thousand dollar grant for a piece of property, well, then that would. So it depends on the size of the uh -huh. grant, um, you know. And we would help you with the grant requirements if there are any matching requirements. Make sure there's paperwork that's required. Oftentimes, whether it's uh, tax forms or you know different yeah. things. Yeah, information we need to right, get right, right, right. Information. Okay. Is there right. is there a an amount a, a kind of cut off? You say, well, if it's not necessarily, so it depends no. on the nature of the grant. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds to me, at least because I'm sort of into grant writing, that it might be interesting to start with a small one so that we could actually go through the process and figure out. If you know of one. Yeah. yeah. If we can figure, you know. Like and sometimes through. there may be other, you have resources, whether it's, um, you know, online resources, other agencies or other, you know, conservation commissions in other towns maybe yeah. that may. You know, have grants. Sometimes your grants for to hire a professional help to maybe help you with study or a, maybe you know those. I know sometimes those exist also. Yeah. All right. Looks like Donnie, we've covered a number of different topics okay. here. First off, we open space funding. Looked like we touched the land acquisition <coughs> process overview. I didn't know. Um, well, maybe we didn't answer that specific question, what town land could be sold without townspeople involvement. No, Not, you, you need a town meeting. Okay. To sell land? To sell land. Yeah. You, do, you need a town meeting to sell land also. Okay. All right. Um, I know there's a nominal sort of value to it, but for all right. intensive purposes to sell any property, you would need a town meeting for that. Okay. And uh, under the topic of grants, the grant process for the WCC, I think we asked some questions on that. The role of the town officials in grants, and then who administers it. And we've addressed that a little bit. Yeah, if there's any questions, or you know, you can always go through my office and, and the new and the assistant administrative officer, and yeah. we would sort of be the lead on that. Yeah, and that you know, Betsy was our liaison. Right, that's I it. assume that'll be that would be correct. Placed in kind. That's so, correct. Right. So you know, that would be. Right, so that person, person would be your point person right. on that. <clears throat> Does the state ever reach out to you and say, you know, we have these grants you might be interested in? Uh, sometimes we get, actually, we get emails from COST, which is Council of Small Towns. We get emails from um, CCM. We get emails from different age. That's usually where we get a heads up from. Do you send those on to us? If we see something appropriate, yes. If we okay. see something that maybe would fit your mission. Yeah. And, and I will mention again that Scrog looks like they're trying Scrog to do sometimes that does because it also, they, yeah. they now have that list of right. available grants that they're keeping. Um, so that's worth keeping an eye on. I, and not that I get direct updates from them, but I mean, we can at least something Especially we can look you, at. Especially if you had an idea of the types of activities you wanted funded yes. with grants, that would be helpful too. Okay. And there it so there was a topic in the middle of that list of um, a cost to maintain open spaces. Is that one of the members said was interested in? There's not really any. Uh, nothing should there be? Of. Possibly, but there's, there's not really any. I mean, there's cost to maintain trails. Um, Who pays? Isn't that land trust? Do you, does well, the town do anything? Do sometimes. Depends on where the trail is located. The land trust, if it's on a land trust property, then they would maintain the trail. If it's on town property, I mean, we have a trail master who's, um, it's not a paid position, but sometimes there's costs related to that. So those are, are those budgeted costs? Are those in a budget someplace? Yeah. Or are those ad hoc? Oh, they well, they're ad mostly ad hoc, but we have, you know, budget to deal with ad hoc expenses. Yeah, well, contingencies. You know, right, Some right. contingencies. Right, okay. right, right. I, I should have used that. If you, know, a saw, you need a new saw or you need, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't do this, but easements of, on town land, are they tracked? Are, yes. Is there a database or a place where all the easements? So, um, I could not find, I know they're in the town clerk's office. They're maintained by the town clerk's office, but we could not locate, you mentioned Kupop has um, 
the book or something. Well, I, what I mentioned to you most recently was Coupop has a list of properties um, that the town owns and part of the classification of those properties is whether they would obtain with grants and aid. Right. Um, they do not have a list of properties that have easements on them. Right. Uh, and I have <coughs> suggested to them, uh, it's been a discussion in a couple of coupon meetings, uh, that since an easement is a real property interest, that, that it's an asset to the town, it should be tracked. And so they're, they're in the process of discussing that. Um, I, I think favorably to try and put that together with the challenge of how do we put that together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to look through all the deeds? Right, right, right. And I pointed out I didn't think anybody should have to look through all the deeds. Um, that I think that as we as we have done work, we've come across some properties that have easements, mm. and, and, and those can form a basis. But I said, suggested that some questions should be asked, perhaps, of people who have been in town for uh, a number of years, <clears throat> and, and maybe especially the town attorney, who would have reviewed any of the easements and may have be able to say, well, I see your list, but you're missing these. As a way to I get there. think Chris Sullivan and um, Bob Life might be good because a lot of wetlands had easements on it and they might be able to even look at past agendas over the end. There's not that many, but they might be able to find I mean, I think if you, yeah, if you went with to, to either Chris Sullivan, the uh, town clerk, yeah. I think collectively, yeah. Yeah, if you put a list together and reviewed it with and certain them. individuals, yeah, exactly. you'd, I think, get most yeah, of them. Yeah, you'd get, get most of them. Yeah. But I, there's no list that yeah. I can That seems find. like a good idea. To it's a good project. Yeah. Maybe you can get a grant for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Scoop Hop is go. more than, than, than capable of getting that. So are you thinking of conservation easements or trail easements yeah. or what? Conservation. conservation. Trail okay. Easements, right. Water. Both, both actually. They're both real property interests. Okay. Um, talking about grants and aid is the next topic, I think, here. Unless I skip something uh, that you wanted to sorry. mention? No, I think that's covered all that. <coughs> um, so um, just in terms of the, um, the grants and aid and the uh, requirements or the conditions of those grants, uh, I'm not aware of any sort of comprehensive list, list for that either. All right. Do we, is everybody comfortable with grants and aid and what they are? No. Did you want? You can you can explain. You did a yeah, good job before. It would be a very simple explanation because <laughs> I, I have no depth on this. Um, when a, a governmental organization gives money to a town to acquire property, and it, it may be more than that, but I, my, our, our interest is property, uh, there are often conditions attached to that. Mm -hmm. and it can be conditions of conservation, and there can be other conditions. And so the, the um, and so those properties, as they are listed in the plan of conservation development in an appendix, a list put together by Kupop, uh, are town lands and their noted grant of conservation. And, or, 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 and each of those properties may have different conditions on them. And we, from just looking the fact that they have, they were grants and aid, and I, I think I used the wrong word just a minute ago, so the list just says grants and aid next to these property names. Just the fact that they, they're grants and aid doesn't tell us what kind of protection they have, for instance, from development. And my interest was, to, is there a compiled list and so that we can go and look what kind of protections these properties have, uh, and if not, um, where do we find the conditions of the grants and aid, uh, because the, um, the deeds, as far as I can tell, in my looking through them, don't have language concerning that. They're only, what's in the deed is the legal part of 
transfer the real property ownership. The restrictions that I would be aware of is if we had a grant to acquire the <coughs> property, then there should okay. be some language on that. We'd have to look through our files. And yeah. We could probably get that from the state if we can't find the older ones. But um, the ones that we were acquired through watershed, uh, the open space grant would definitely have restrictions on it. Okay. I mean, that's the whole reason why we <laughs> got the grant. Yeah. This, yeah. It, 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 Yes. But specifically so. what they are, and yeah. I'm not sure we yeah. have to look at each individual yeah. one. Yeah, I don't know that we can assume that the conditions on one are right, the cannot. conditions for all. Right, you cannot. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. It isn't. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll try, we'll I can try uh, to pursue I can that try a little bit. Yeah, can, if, if, if we're to know where to look, and that that's going to be a one by one. Um, you know, we'll probably do the ones we're interested in. In supporting what we're doing. Is there a budget, an annual budget for open space where I know we have, or there's 72,000 or some number like that that's set aside for open space? Uh -huh. Is it is there an amount included every year in the budget? Not. To no. no. So typically. So it doesn't increase ever? No. It's, it's, it's been that number for a while. But it wasn't that way for a while. Correct. Like I, I said early, earlier, in 97 to 03, there was a lot of activity. I, mean, I have a list here. And there's one, two, well, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe I, I misunderstood. Maybe 20 properties on it. Maybe I misunderstood Paul's question, but I came away with the impression he was asking, was there a, an annual funding through the budget process to, no. to put into that there is not, account? No. There's not. Okay, so there's never been a. Typically, it's it's you you borrow the money up front and then pay it, at, you know. I see. After the fact, as opposed you to putting money aside. Try putting ten thousand so dollars. You know the budget right. so well. Is there any? Would there be any possibility of saying every year the town puts ten thousand in to eventually have enough money to really acquire something? Because seventy two thousand isn't really enough. But I think if you put. Ten thousand dollars a year, and you still after ten years. You still only have only have a hundred thousand well, dollars, <laughs> which is which which isn't going to buy you <laughs> a garage. Maybe fifty thousand a year. But is there any appetite for that, or is that very low appetite? Probably a low appetite. Yeah. And you know, even though rates are going up, there's still a historic lows. So I think, in terms of acquiring money. Yeah, the, our interest rates are at low, low yeah. historic lows, so if you're going to borrow money, hmm. you know, it's a good time to do that. All right, our next topic is uh, any opportunities for the Conservation Commission within the ARPA and infrastructure. So um, we have a process for that. It's um, uh, the um, Strategic Plan Committee, which is um, David Vogel and uh, Sheila McCraven are both on that com on that committee. And they have uh, received a number of requests for ARPA funding. So if you'd like to put a request in writing, you can do that. If you have a use and uh, you know, a reason, um, then they will evaluate that request along with all the other requests. I, I'll, I'll jump That's in the process. Here. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to send a process. I, I took a look through the Oh, you line. were at the meeting, right? Yeah, yeah so right, I was right, at, yeah. I, I thought right. I was the one person who yeah, mentioned that. <laughs> did, did, did you hear him mention it last night? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right. I was famous, but not <laughs> <laughs> um, the, um uh, In reading through uh, the, or I think it was the American Rescue Plan, I couldn't see anything there that might have been appropriate to our scope. Right, uh, and wondered since you, I think you probably spent time probably, with that. I'd, I'd if there's agree. anything there, and I, that, yeah. that's part of the reason yeah. for the question: is there something anything we're missing that would be worth pursuing? That I didn't that strike uh, you. Right? Not currently, based yeah. on the discussion so far. All right. Um, what about the recreation part? The um, there is a that's true. There is a part for recreation. Um, it's currently. Uh, you know, discuss in terms of it's more broad umbrella for recreation, but um, the current discussion centers around improvement of playgrounds and um, 
and, and that's it, it, that, that, that is that within the strategic plan or in the Re right? recreation is within the strategic plan strategic plan yeah right. and so the strategic plan it, it, it is, is looking to use the strategic plan as a guide to spend the ARPA funds and so well, I, I thought ARPA funds were restricted to certain types of expenditures they've um, the government has reduced those restrictions ah. for, right. so it's for maybe wider than I was correct for any okay. entity that received right. less than ten million dollars the restrictions were lifted significantly ah. okay of which we are we're one so right so that gives a lot more it has to be a something that a government would normally spend money on the government you know use can yes. use it for something a government would right. not normally do right but if it's something a government normally does it's um, Few, there's a few restrictions. You can't use it for, you can't pay off a pension obligation with it. You can't um, put it into a fund balance. You can't, uh, there's maybe one more restriction. There are very um, narrow restrictions, but for the most part, if it's a government function, you can spend money right. and use it. All right. So, yeah, so recreation is one of the um, few like the big umbrella topics. Could possibly seek a grant? Through our point. Would you repeat that? I'm just I'm a little confused, but with recreation, since so many people participate in the community garden, would that be the kind of thing that they could ask for a grant? I mean, you could, so you could ask. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's a lot more ask than there is to give, right? As you might imagine, but you know, it, it'll be evaluated. But it won't and, be evaluated and, if you don't ask. Yeah, right. What about? And, um, and, Sorry, and the you know the the pathways the greenway through town is it's a large rec recreation area for many people. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Also, yeah. I was going to yeah. ask the question. Okay. Say, for instance, we identified a piece of land that um, we thought would be great for a trail extension, but it it was private land, and we could buy an easement to have a trail on that land and con a, a conservation easement on it. Also, mm -hmm. would that qualify for the ARPA funds? I don't see why not. It should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned the uh, infrastructure investment, investment plan. plan. Community so, oh, yeah, so most of the um, infrastructure plan, at least that I've been aware of so far, is going through Scrog. And okay. they're, they're, they're using that sort of funding um, pathway. Mm -hmm. And um, and under a lot of those, um, you need to, um, if, if it's a project, you have to design it yourself and then use infrastructure funds to build it. Okay. So, like if you want to do a side, just as an example, if you want to do a sidewalk, you would design the sidewalk and then use the infrastructure funds to build the sidewalk. Okay. I think it's to sort of gear it towards more shovel-ready projects and not have it tied up in Mm -hmm. Other projects that may or may never happen. Got it. Right. And then community project funding. I'm not. I'm not. You know. I'm not familiar. Okay. With that, that came up with yeah. the, the Scrog uh, uh, overview of, of money, uh, government <coughs> monies coming down. All right. We'll move on to the last topic, which is uh, PA 490. Okay. PA 490. Are any of you familiar with that? What that is? I'm familiar with it, but yeah. I, I, the commission, I, it's not been a topic with the, the commission before. Oh, okay. So it's um, the PA 490 is a program that um, essentially um, designates, uh, and I have, a, I have a little bit of information on here, but it. Um, and, our, and our interest is going to be open space. Oh, yeah. It allows you to designate your property for, uh, or farm forest or open space to be assessed at its use value rather than its fair market value. So that essentially allows a, a reduced assessment on your property for, um, as if, it class, if, it, if it qualifies under the program, um, and there's you know, the list of sort of ways to determine uh, whether it classifies, and then you can get a reduced assessment for a portion of your property that is designated as either farm, forest, or open space and therefore uh, reduce the taxes on it. Is that a commitment to uh, from the property owner to keep that as open space yeah. in perpetuity? Well, or no, just sure while they it, get the tax break? Yeah, as long as you get the tax break, right. And it's a process that um, you file an application with the town assessor. 
and then the town assessor will require certain documentation, certain application materials, and then I will make the determination. And then if she does, she'll record it on property records. But a, so, a property owner could could revoke that and decide to develop it. At then, a yeah, point. then, it just, yeah, then, you, then it, it, you just lose the designation. Then it's removed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Not permanent protection. It's right. It's not permanent. Yeah. Right. It, it, the, the, the thought is it was in, this, in some ways an incentive to property owners to not develop their land to keep it open, and for doing that, there's a lesser tax based upon the the, the use of it. Um, being in open space or farmland or forest, and they would be paying a lesser tax rate, last as long as they maintain it that way. Yeah. It. And then, <laughs> and then it, no, it it has to be reapplied when the property changes hands. Right. There's a few. Um, let's see. If there's a. Um, Right, if there's any change, or if it changes hands, or if the size changes, if, or if you reduce the size. Um, Chair, do you have a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any record of who has that, and is that public information? Um, I'm sure they have a record I, of it in the I, assessor's I, office, and I'm I, sure I, it's public. It's on the it's on the field I, it's on the field cards. Yeah, what yeah. It, whoever has it. I mean, you should I probably get us a list. And, and but I have gotten the list oh, before. Yeah. Now so, my list is a little old right now. I like so, that list because that. I think would help us identify properties that people are conscientious about wanting it to be open space yes. and people that might be willing okay. to. I, I can certainly send you the existing list. I'll get an updated list and send it to you. That, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, Tony, that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had, it's an area I was interested in and I had two specific questions. Um, unless anybody else has a fundamental question before I ask my Mm -hmm. Process questions. I just wanted to look at the what was the reduction of the assessment? How much was the reduction of the assessment? I'm not sure. Probably the yeah. It's yeah, the not a it's not a large amount. amount. And it's different for each of the categories. Yes. Yep. Um, what are the categories, Barbara? Farm, open space and forest. And forest. Okay. Tony, you, you, can you speak at all to the process of how in, in, in Woodbridge how property is approved for PA 490? Do you know anything about that process, I, or is that strictly with the assessor? As far as I know, it's strictly with the assessor. I'm not aware of. I've okay. I've never been involved in that process. Okay. I've never I, seen I, it come in front I, of any board or commission. Okay, I that, think it's just the assessor. Okay, I, and I maybe made an assumption they thought it might have been involved in, in some of that because I think if it meets dollar. if it meets the criteria it is right. it is approved. Uh, yeah. Correct. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not it, a major problem. Yeah. Right. Right. Well you well yeah. I mean, to be you, a farm, you've answered you my have... question that the conservation commission is not typically um, involved or it wouldn't be involved. Yeah. Uh, my my take on it is that it, it is supported in many cases because it, it's a thought of a way to preserve open space. <coughs> Some open space, many people would be prone not to develop the land in any case. And so you're, you're subsidizing that land in essence when it, it, it would stay the same whether, whether it was under PA or 99. Um, well, except for over the years, having had land, if the taxes are really high, it starts to put pressure. Right, on right. Needing to mm -hmm. But if it's not, cost. if it's not a developable piece of land, you know, then then the, the plan, you know. But if it's if it's you know a piece of land that might be subdivided and built upon, then yes, the, the, it's worthwhile for the town to perhaps pursue that. Yes, I agree. Um, and I, but then my second question, which I, I assume I know the answer to now, is that when um, is there a, a review process to make sure that when lands are sold, that that designation gets well, the application has to be made again, that that designation goes away, and we have to go. 
Yes, uh, I would. I would imagine like when this again the assessor would assessor. No, I believe yes. in my own experience that's what happens. The yeah. assessor knows that the land is sold yeah. when it's divided, and so and and it changes and, on the record records. Yeah, and then you the just owner. yeah. Well, the, yeah, the, the owner of record changes. Right. That you is that designation, designation. Yeah. you know removed and. It's offered to that new owner, or I'm not sure they the have exact, to know about it. I'm not I, sure of the exact it process. It usually is not because the new owner is usually a part of a subdivision, and that could, yeah, never could, comes into play. Could, could be. But in my case, I broke out a couple of pieces of my property. The rest of the property then remained under the forest. Okay, so you have more experience with this than. Yeah, I didn't know what it was called, to tell you the truth, because we've always had it. I mean, right. It's just something yeah. that's always been. <laughs> okay. So, hmm. didn't have any idea this was it. <clears throat> um, right. Other, um, any other final questions for Tony? This has been very helpful. It has been, thank we'll you. Think them. Okay. We'll think of them. Okay. We'll think of them in Tony, a few hours. <laughs> having someone meet and sort of... Uh, if we're thinking of a grant, try to field it through you at the beginning so we can get some more directions specifically on I'm sorry, say that again? If we're having a specific, entertaining a specific idea of a grant, are you okay if we come and speak to sure, you? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, anytime. Great. And that can, you know, help you that'd be great. guide you in the right direction. And if we see anything um, come, come across an email or something that is remotely related to your commission, we'll forward it to you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, how imminent is imminent with your uh, replacement? Oh, with the replacement? You're getting help? Hopefully soon, very soon. Okay. Yep. Now, can you send okay. it to all of us, or would you send that on to us? Because even if you get it, we the, might not get it. I typically would send it to the chair, and then the chair yeah. would, okay, so you'll would send, send it, it to us. us. Yeah. Because yeah. some of us might have ideas about it, even though yeah. some others don't. Oh, I'm, I mean, maybe talking too differently. I was talking about the replacement of. Oh, I was. I meant the no, grant information. I was talking yeah. about. You know, if Tony has an idea that oh, this might be interesting, oh, can you oh, get yeah, it? Yeah. Can you send it to us? Because even yes. if it's not interesting okay. to you, it might spark an interest in okay. amongst one of us. Yeah, both of those. I guess Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, Next up uh, for us is the approval of the minutes. And you know, it's the same date as I said before, 8-18-2022. You're aware I, that- That was from last month, my agenda. Tim, didn't change are you aware that, that David is sitting behind you? Uh, I am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, I did see him come in. Welcome, David. Um, so I will make a uh, motion to Approve the minutes as submitted. Any a second for that? I'll second it. Any, any, uh, any discussion? I didn't I didn't uh, attend that meeting, so I'll abstain. Okay. Well, there's no discussion. We'll, no discussion. We will take that to a vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Raise your hand, or otherwise. And, and uh, Paul is abstaining. Good notes, good notes were taken. I thought they were good. Yes, that's why Very I didn't have any <laughs> doubt I could just just uh, put them up for approval. Um, all right, uh, the next topic is the going into the work session for the green ray description. Um, the um, I'm, my computer is hooked up, and I will turn it on if necessary, but I was hoping it was not necessary, um, except I think I did not bring my copy with me. So that may necessitate my looking at my computer just for my own purpose, but um, I wanted to just try to address two, two areas tonight. Uh, one is the fact that we had talked about uh, last time, and Paul, I realized you weren't here, but we, based upon a comment that you made during our hike, that uh, that you 
enjoyed the length of the second walk that we took more than the first, Spurred thought that perhaps the sections uh, could be combined uh, to get them a more appropriate length of walking and closer you know, to uh, to each other, so, so that some weren't very long, and some were very short. Um, and so I took a pass at that in the copy that I sent to everybody um, of combining those. And the last time I did. Um, I think I had sent out, so hopefully you saw Paul, but I did, uh, and I can bring it up here if you want, I did um, share how it might be combined, and then for this meeting I combined it in the document. So I wanted to see if people had any further Besides comment on that. Besides combining it, does it alter any of them? It just combines no, them? No, just strictly combine the existing trail. So, so, so how we, many sections are there now? In this new combined version, how many sections are there? Barbara, can you help me? I Let me grab my computer and I will just look here. Okay. Um, so there are six sections. Yeah, there are six sections. Okay. Yeah, there are six sections. Okay. Yeah, there are six sections. will have eight sections. Versus like 13? Versus 13, yeah. Um, and it, what it also did was simplify when we talked about the plan. It, it allows us to simplify the plan a little bit because um, we could present some of the information in the uh, in the area of the document that talked about the existing greenwood, so it just simplified the, the proposed additions. You didn't have to repeat some information there; it just worked out that way. Um, so, I, as I mentioned in my email, I, you know, I liked it, uh, and I put the mileages down uh, in the document. So, any other? Comments on that? Makes sense to to do that. Um, no, I'm I'm laughing at myself because I was too scotch to print out another 39 pages of of information, <laughs> having printed it yeah, out well, once. Now, now the um, document's only about 33, <laughs> um, so it made it shorter. 32, I think. Um, I have to look. And because of this, I actually I I found out how to do double sided on my printer, but. Suddenly it went away, so I still don't can't do it. So I was just wanted to ask you, you know, which how you combine them. I mean, can you? Well, can yeah, you let me then. I'm gonna I'm gonna start this up because I I'm not sure I can verbally describe. I'm kind of looking at the the list of where we each had the trails, you know, to look at. seconds to warm up. I'm going to be right in your way, I think. No? You're all moved. And I think we might need to flip one light here. This was the Excel where, mm -hmm. 
and this might suffice instead of going back to the document, but this was the suggested combination. And you can see the approximate mileages there. I, there was a mistake in one of the mileages that I corrected in the document, so this won't match 100%, uh, but it, it will give you some sense. So the, the last walk we took was the blue, and so those, those all got combined in three sections to one section. That seems like a good idea. And How did you treat the... I mean, before the, the different sections sort of were from entry point to entry point in the trails, or entry point to exit point, whatever. How did you treat the combining? Do they still have? Well, right. Let, let me go to the Word document for that. Um, but I, I think, Barbara, that actually was not the case, and that was one of the reasons to combine some of them so that there were better entry points. So, for instance, this is actually misrepresenting what eventually we did. Um, so instead of going to, on the blue, for instance, um, the original section went from Melford Meadows to Wepwag Falls. So in the combination I suggested, I cut it off at North Racebrook. Okay. And because that's a nice parking lot. Mm -hmm. And then took the next section in the green starting at North Racebrook and going to Beecher Road. Okay, so it isn't exactly as this. Yeah, that, that was my template, and I will switch okay. over to the Word document, and, and you'll see the entry points. Let me, um, so did you change the maps and combine them? Uh, the existing sections didn't have many maps. Um, So this is, the, if I go back to the beginning of the document, excuse me. So we, we go from um, the Darling House to Dillon Road in section number two. Let me, let me just check something here. For some reason, section one is in number one there. So, you know, from the, the top of West Rock, um, it goes to the Darling House first. There's no public entry of what the top of West Rock is just not accessible to the public, so you, you enter a Darling House. And then from Zoom a little bigger. Big enough now? Mm -hmm. okay. um, so we get Darling House, the section begins at the Darling House 1907 Lucifer Turnpike, and then ends on Dillon Road. There's a space you know, on the street for a little pullover. So those have a start and stop. And the next section from Dillon Road out to Amity Road. Um, you know, as we did, we had a park on Apple Tree Lane. That's where we would perhaps in the future explore. We could use town property and perhaps put up some parking up on that uh, that property up on Round Hill. Um, Might be a grant possibility. Uh, I would hope not for a couple of car pullover, but in any case, and then um, across on Seymour Road, you know there's parking there. We parked there for the mm -hmm. last walk. And then Seymour Road, again, we'll park in that parking lot. 
and because now we're ending at North Racebrook, we have nice parking there. And uh, North Racebrook goes to Beecher Road, and we know what the town property where the cornfields are and the dog park, we have that nice parking lot. So that's a, that's a very nice parking situation. Uh, Beecher Road, <coughs> Park Lane. Park Lane has street parking uh, alongside the road. It's a, it's a pretty quiet road, and so that, that's not a terrible parking situation. And then um, Park Lane to Fountain Street. Um, Fountain Street has space for two cars, maybe three if you really squeeze it. But mm -hmm. not, so not a great situation there. Um, that could be improved. But that's right on a state road, so a little more difficult to work with. Oh, those, those are the. That's uh, mm -hmm. section eight. Why I didn't? Why I'm missing section number one? I don't know. <laughs> but in any case, does that answer your question, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Yes, so this might change after we go through some of the extension possibilities where, you know, if you go a little bit further, you could park in the country club parking lot there, too. Well, right. But, yes. Well, what I tried to do, well, no, I guess I didn't skip number one. This is, excuse me, following the interrupting this. section number one. I paged down past it when I was first bouncing around. Uh, the, the these sections would stay the same. What we would be adding on would be new sections that do tie into here. But I, you, and we'd have to look at it. But I think for the most part, if I remember correctly, they are standalone sections. They wouldn't they wouldn't change what it, it exists. They truly are extensions. The only exception might get to be if we complete the circuit and we, we end up going through um, uh, the, the um, I'll say the, the cemetery off of Pease Road and then across the street to the, is that a ledgy property? Is that soccer fields uh, and the playground there? Uh, and then you can you you tie back into come out again over on um, Beecher Road, so you could get into the center of town. That that could be you know, some place where we might um, you know, adjust a section, but th that wouldn't be the intention. The intention would be to try to leave them the same. But I think what Paul is asking, for instance, because I'm familiar with it. If we were to get easements or property in one way or another to connect, say, the end of North Racebrook Road to to Indian Pond, we got instead of walking on the road, would the sections then change? Well, the, the, I mean, those are you, not extensions; those are tying <coughs> two different sections together. And you are, you were talking about where we walked yeah. recently. Yeah. But that that would be a change in my mind of just the um, that that would be the, a change within the section on how you walk. So if walking on one road, you would walk a small amount on that one road, then you take a turn on a different road and then come through the easements that we might acquire. So there's in total less road walkage. And so you change the document, you change because you're, you would change the path, but the, the, end, the two ends of the section would stay the same. I, I like the concept of having a, a parking area or a reasonable parking area on either side of each yeah. section because then you can promote it to people in terms of, okay. if you want to go for a hike, you can, you can hike on this particular section uh, and there's an end yep. there's an end area and a start area right I, I think yes 
and, and that's when I did the combination, that's what I tried to keep in mind, Paul. I think that's, I agree, it's very valuable to do that. And it makes it more attractive to people. Sure. Um, so. so. I think even, well, I was just going to say, I, I, I'm still not totally understanding because you, again, going back to where we were, you end at, I mean, the end of one section is North Racebrook Road, and then oh. it begins at the Weapon Walks Falls, so there's nothing in between. Whereas I'm saying if we acquire the ability to never go on the road, and it's okay. all caught together, uh, you know. All right, so it, I, I understand. Tied so together. If, if we're coming from Seymour Road, and we walk all the way through, uh, and we get to Melford Meadows, and instead of continuing to North Racebrook, where the parking lot is, you can, we hang a left. Right, exactly. And, and we, we, we never even reach the road. Yeah, uh, then, I, then I think it's a larger <laughs> reconfiguration of the sections, because you have to deal with now, where are you gonna tell the people to park? Right. And, and it may go back to where it is, not to Wepawag, but to, uh, it's Indian Trail, right? That's, yeah, that's Indian, Indian Trail, Trail right. but street parking on Indian Trail, which there is yeah. a couple spots now, and maybe that's what you tell people to do. Yeah. Or, as I listed in the document in many places, alternate parking. You could park on North Racebrook and walk up into Melford Meadows and take a right instead of going straight. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you give people that alternative, yeah, so it would better be. parking. Yeah, so that's a more major. And I was, we, we talked about a couple of things on our walk, and I was picturing the one where we would hang the left at that second street. I forget the name of it. That would go up. But you're right. You, that would. That's more more extensive. You'd have to rethink and, it. And to me, that's our one of our big objectives is to, to connect all these different things in places that they are connect are not at this point. So mm -hmm. yeah. all of a sudden it is one continuous Seriously. trail. So then you have to pick through open space. Yeah. As opposed to having to walk on the roads right. at right. times. Yeah. Then you have then we you know the, the sections might change where it becomes more and as you say it's where where you park is seems to me the good cutoff points yeah. because that's what people are going to yeah. do. They're going to go park in one place and walk one section one way or the other. So. Okay. But that's the, obviously down the road. But, <laughs> if I may. But it sounds like that. we generally <laughs> think the combining these and is the oh, yes. way, way to go. And, yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't, doesn't take away. We're not you know, I always try to keep the history in mind, and it, it was defined. We, we, we've got the same path. We just our starting points are a little different, and we're saying people can walk a little further at one time. You know, and they always have the option of cut off at some of the other secondary entrances. Mm -hmm. Okay, and good. I think this sort of ties in, and you may have discussed it, but I didn't quite get it. But you could do section 3A and do a little extension, a little in insert a paragraph which goes to Indian Trail, and section 4B. And right, yeah. 4A. Yeah, so alternate. I think that would be yeah. worth me. Alternate entries, alternate paths, right. or, yeah, without. Just you know, I, I always go back and forth. I, I started with them doing things. 3A, and then I say, well, that get, that's getting more too technical. <laughs> and so I'm trying to, when I, I'm trying to get away from that a little bit. And, and the, the expansion, what I was mentioning before, I was able to get rid of a, one or two of those, uh, simplify. All right, the other, the other feedback I wanted to try to get tonight is if anybody had comments on the, some of the verbiage, um, some of the introductory pages in any of the sections and so forth. Um, do we need to modify any of those? Um, I was not going to try to walk through those word by word or right. paragraph by paragraph or page by page, but I just wanted to make sure that those seem to be, you know, nothing objectionable or um, 
that wasn't understandable or wasn't wasn't correct to, the, to your knowledge. I I can add that. Um, I think, and I think you and I talked about this that, that the historical society I think will come up with a couple of people to join, maybe one or two people from here, and we can start listing out the, the points of interest, shall we say? Yeah. Along and each it can just be added at a later date. And we can just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am I'm very much looking forward to that happening. Um, Sharon, your comment I think is correct. We can we can build the document. Doesn't mm -hmm. it's not static. We can add those, and you know, and it's an ongoing Bar draft. Barbara <laughs> ongoing because Barbara shared that there's there's already uh, the historical site already has a more than a plate full of projects they're working on. So I, I think we had talked about you know, starting to get it introduced. This year, um, bringing it up at a board meeting and then and figure out how to go forward and, and then be able to work on it as we go forward next year. Um, so that'd be great. The, the, the last thing, um, you know, I, I do want to get feedback on the document, so I, I do plan to. Um, and as you, David, I'm sorry, you're not back, or just, um, And this, nobody has to move. Um, but we know our Greenway Trail system was a collaboration in terms of the pathways of the Conservation Commission, the Park Association, and the Land Trust. Um, and so I, I do want to get the feedback of those organizations. And you know, now that I, we're, we're almost up to snuff, I'm waiting for Scrog to send me some thumbnail maps that I'm going to embed in there um, for the current uh, Greenway. Um, and we'll, you know, as a, as a guide, and there's somebody on the commission suggested that, and so we'll we'll put those in there, and then I'm going to try to send it to uh, both organizations and let them give us some feedback. What I, other thing I wanted to ask the commission is thoughts about um, whether we want to have any type of, um, and I want to be careful with my words here because I don't want to them to be misinterpreted, a public session where we ask specifically for um, people to come in and comment, make it available and comment and, and before we uh, go to finalize it. I don't see to do that, personally. I'm not sure what they could add or, and they can always and they can always make comment out, you know. Afterwards, and, and yeah, it's not be, a. It's, it's nothing that. And we can yeah. always change it. Yeah. The world is going to come to an end if we yeah. obviously want it. Right. Think we're we're misleading like, anybody or leaving anything out, and if okay. they have something. To okay. And uh, then Val and Paul and me. All right. Just very well to, done. I'm going to offer it up. Um, Okay, do you think we're any any other last comments on that? No. Okay. Um move on. Um the next uh, agenda item is Wood Bridge Like My Me Day. Uh we were offered uh and Wood Bridge Like Me Day is planned for Sunday, October 9th, eleven to two, and it's a um it is a um I should have, I have a brochure someone sent me recently, I should have sent it on to everybody, but um, but it, it's been described to me as a festival. Um, we've been invited to have a have a table if we would like to. Uh, and there are many organizations in town that have been invited to do this, many, and I'm sure you've all been to some event where people have tables. Uh, the land trust, I know, at the concerts this summer had tables. The rec department had a table, and, and they just are there, available to talk about the organization and uh, something of interest might be of interest to the public and people walk around. And well, the event was held last year. The same. Same. Thing. Same. The we were like. Event. Was, well, What's the purpose of the event? What's their? It's a. 
diversity. Celebrate the diversity of diversity Woodbridge, I think, town. is the... And it was, last year it was in conjunction with the road race. Okay. Um, the road race is on the first this year, and there will be some um, organizations at that also. On October 1st. On October 1st, but there was some problems with the date and the day. And so they, so really and truly there's going to be, a, shall we call it a mini event on the 1st and then a bigger one probably uh, on the 9th. October 9th is the official day Sunday. of w this year for Woodbridge Like Me. Um, so typically a table, um, you know, needs to be, um, have one or two people from the organization there. Um, I've seen organizations, um, and I'll just refer to the land trust again because I'm just aware of it because I was at the concert, I was sitting very close to their table, so I saw halfway through the, you know, whatever the concert was, they, the person switched, the, you know, a couple people left and a couple people came, so they just shared it, that's what I'm saying. So, well, you're asking if we have interest in doing that. Yeah, I'm asking if the commission wants, wants to, to do it. Well, here's, here's my suggestion for that. And I think, Barbara, um, this fits in a little bit with the conversation we were having about um, uh, promotion a little bit. Um, I thought what we could do is bring this and promote open space through this and, and getting people to understand that we do have a greenway and we can point it out and we can have there's a fresh resupply and we can point it out and we can have there's a fresh resupply and we can point it out and Five of each of them, and there's probably a dozen of them, 12 or 13, and um, not necessarily give out. Giving them out could be one strategy, but we'd have to have a whole bunch, and they don't, you know, people tend to take them and then toss them, so I'm not so thrilled about that. But but we can, you know, advertise. If, it, if it's not in there, uh, we can write on the, the town web address, and they can go there. Write, you know, give them something with the town web address on it. Um, it's at the town website, but they can look through the trail map if they're interested in a specific section. We can open it up and talk to them about that section. So there, there'd be something at least to engage people to about what we're about, one of the things we're about, and, and a chance to talk about the importance of acquiring. You know, this is how we use the open space. Importance of acquiring some of it. What we're trying to do in, in, in the match. So that that's would be my idea of what to, you know, the, I mean, have some props to you wouldn't just be standing there trying to make conversations. I could think of another thing that would be probably very important that we do is is just a board explaining the difference between open space and protected property and, and yeah. you know yeah. the, the two or three different yeah. um, conditions because People obviously don't know this. I think open space is protected. And, yes, and, right. and if we just have something explaining it, just lettered. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, um, you know, like all open space is not protected kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the just made me think of it, and I'll say this if you're looking for a, a definition, um, and I have this pulled off. When I went looking around on what is open space and ended up the state DEP site, uh, they use the um, <coughs> definition um, lar largely intact from the um, PA 490 law, which is mm -hmm. what we were just talking to Tony about, um, have about because you know, 490 addresses land for open space, and so they have a definition of what it is. And so it's a nice definition. Um, it, but, but it's not, I mean, people have lots of disagreements about what open space is. 
but I like this because it, it's relatively clear and it has the, the endorsement of the state. And that, and something we can stand behind. So, you know, we can make that available and, and uh, you know, have a, a few copies of that to talk to and, you know, that, that's... So, yeah, that's not a bad, because you'll be talking about open space and you'll, you will Fitzgerald and you'll quickly get into whether it's protected or not. Yeah, so let's keep talking. Um, so, with, you know, with those things, uh, you know, otherwise it's there, so, you know, you know people who come by, you say hello. So. So do people want to do it? Is this something we want to do? I mean. I don't think I'm around that weekend. I'd be willing to spend some time, but I don't really want to do it the whole, hours? The whole time. And it, it, it's, uh, it's from 11 to 2. Um, I see people breaking down their tables before the end. I will say that. Um, I will say, to be fair, I'm out of town, so I, I cannot help on this one. I did talk to Kate a little bit. Kate said she, she would be willing to help. Um, so, you know, we can put together, you know, as I said, everybody has lives, so if you can split the time, we can get four people and take an hour and a half each nominally. Um, and someone is willing to fold this up and put it in the back of their car tonight because I'm out of here flying out tomorrow morning. <laughs> so if you want this, and, and I have the name of the, the person um, from the uh, Woodbridge Like Me committee and, um, that I would send you as a point person. Tony Belinsky here is a point person who has put a table on the reserve. She, I told her I'd have to bring it to me. She said, I'll put one of the table aside for it. And then Tony can help with the maps. So I can give if somebody who can agree to be point person on it, but um, or, or you know, I, I don't know, it needs a point person, but somebody's got to take this and somebody's got to get the maps from Tony and, and um, yeah, figure out who's working which hour and a half. Yes, so we need to. I'm seeing that, of course, I didn't bring my calendar, so I don't know. I'm not sure what my travel schedule is right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can go here for an hour and a half, but my car won't have that. Okay. Oh, I can take those. Okay. So we have. You can contribute a tablecloth and a plant to make the table nicer. You're not going to be around? I don't, I, I have a feeling I'm not. My brother's coming to town. It's a nice activity. It is. He can learn all about Woodbridge. <laughs> he can go to all the tables. Right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, um, it sounds like we may have at least three people who could spend some time. So, Even I, if it's I, not the whole time. Even if it's not, even if you got to fold up early because you know, somebody's not available to work, you know, or, Maybe one person can do it by themselves, or the last piece, but, but I, I think it'd be worthwhile to do. So if the three of you are willing, and then two of you can see what your schedules are. And it doesn't need You, you know, know what might be nice to people. do is to um, go to like beer apps and spend $20 on little plants so you can give people a little something. I can learn in the store and that. A little try. Oh, OK. People, people attention, attention. To it. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Maybe they'll even donate something or something. Yeah. Or maybe best need. So I'll it's work been, on that. I'll work on making the table a nice table. Yeah. Okay. You can be our okay. decorating chair. Yeah. You can be okay. Decorating. So I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, people know and I'll, I'll send out uh, a note. I'll send, I'll send it to all with the contact information and then just leave it to, to um, all right. you to. Sure, it comes off. Um, okay. Great. Thank you all. Sorry, I won't be here to help.
Um, Ten minutes. Next item is uh, tree ordinance update. The tree ordinance uh, working group is <laughs> going to meet in the next week or two. Uh, David was David Lober was very helpful. He provided us some links to some very good information that we have to digest. Um, there is a book that Deep has uh, has published that Barbara's going to work on getting, and we need to get the data from the person who used to be in Westport, who's now in Greenwich, mm -hmm. who did the research on when they came up with their regulation. Okay. So there's a, a book that David uh, found a link for us on that's, um, it surveys all the tree ordinances within Connecticut. It's a little bit dated, but it, it's it's still a good place to start. Okay, great. Very good. Great. I think we can safely say we'll come back with an update at the next meeting. The next meeting. We, we just have not been okay. able to. So, so our goal is over the next couple of weeks or next few weeks before our next meeting is to get together and, and uh, after we digest the information that we've read. Thank you. Um, the uh, last agenda item um, uh, updates on some existing items and uh, items from the next agenda. The only update I have on the listed items is 124 Seymour Road. Um, that um, uh, action has been postponed from uh, September 17th. I believe it was until January 28th. Wow. That was a foreclosure sale? Yes. Yeah. Do we so, know why? Uh, there was a petition to the court, and the court granted an extension to give oh. the owner more time to make a private sale. Okay. Um, January what, do you know? 28th. 28th? Is what I was told. I didn't put eyes on that myself. That yeah, I was sent the link, but I took mm -hmm. the person's word um, uh, from the uh, Trust for Public Land. Actually. My contact there. So, you know, with that, Barbara, I know there was maybe perhaps some interest, and I'd like to still continue mm -hmm. pursue with you, pers you know, helping that person. This may give, you know, with this well, amount of time, maybe there's impetus, less yes. concern. Yep. Um, yep. And more time to uh, I shall let them know. get other information. So, if we, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was four bullet items. Um, if you've had a chance to discuss that with the person, that, you know, what, what to do is next steps, but those are still open. I talked to the person at the Trust for Public Land and they are mm -hmm. fully uh, willing. Okay. Have that discussion. Would the trust for public land would they provide any grant money if we wanted to buy an easement or or buy the land outright? Um, I I don't believe that the trust for public land provides grants. Um, they and I cannot speak fully to the extent of and the scope of what they do. That they they try to help bring people together to make these acquisitions happen. Um, they help entities go after grants. They facilitate that. Um, they try to you know sometimes get instead of thinking of one entity buying the whole thing, putting together some coalition to save a property, acquire a property. Um, I had some sense that there may be, uh, they, they do have, I guess, angels that they have contact with and sometimes can get interest. Uh, people who come in and just use their own money to preserve a particularly important piece of land. Uh, to, and especially when it might give time to um, the other entities to put together the grants to come up with the money. So um, they there's there's no such person 
from their end in this case right now. Um, there was a little hint that sometimes there's money, but they're typically doing like really big million dollar acquisitions. This is really at the outer band of what they're interested in. It's they also, don't they not provide legal help, but, but give legal information? They advice, think. yeah. Yeah, they're a good source of information and help. Um, other um, for agenda items for next time? Any, anything I'm there? just wondering if David has anything he'd like to add or share. Or yes. Any um, report from the Board of Selection if we're doing that? I mean, is there any brief? Well, that, that we, we don't do that formally anymore, but I'm certainly glad to hear any. Yeah, I have a couple, of, a couple of things from the board, a couple of other things that I know just tangentially. Um, you know, the state has, I think it's a mandate for a percentage of open space in, in, in the state, which is somewhere above 20%. Mm -hmm. And they're encouraging towns that do have open space available to keep it available. And <clears throat> there, should be, there should be grant money, I don't know for sure, but there should be grant money um, the towns to purchase open space under that mandate. I would investigate that. David, can I ask you a question? If the town owned some land, could they you get grant money to um, put a conservation easement on it? You know, if it wasn't already developed, but to save the property, could that be? But is there someone we can contact to find out? I think the Connecticut Trust for Public Land would, that's the type of question you might ask them. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just thinking, like, we were talking earlier this evening about uh, PA 490. Yeah. Kind of takes, takes uh, the financial incentive for people to develop land away because they can get a reduced tax rate. Well, mm -hmm. it could perhaps help the town have less of a financial incentive to do something with a piece of property if there was something that would basically compensate them yeah. for that with a conservation easement. Right. Good point. Right. There's also a Connecticut Land Conservation Council who we have, you know, no personal contacts, but, but who um, write to us. And, and so we can probably ask them as well. Um, so, um, at the board meeting, a uh, discussion of 124 Seymour Road came up, and the board voted unanimously to support um, the Conservation Commission on that. So, were you to apply for any grants, you'd have to back them up the town. Great. Um, another strategic plan, if you look at 12B, which is um, recreation, um, they do. Men, they do mention walking trails. Now they specifically talk about trails connecting various um, parts of town, various parts of the center of town. Um, but it doesn't have to be that specific because the, the designation for ARPA funding was for part of it was for um, open space or outdoor recreation. Um, so things like pavilions by the uh, the senior center fall under that. Um, but these sidewalks fall under that. Um, but the, um, the, the the hiking trails should fall under that as well, because that's certainly passive outdoor recreation. So I think you can put it for that many other places. Yeah, I mean. I mean there's, there's one other thing. I went to a meeting before this. That's why I was late. <clears throat> there's this 2030 committee, mm. uh, strategic plan committee, and they're you know talking about they're talking about the the uh, business district today. And one of the things they talked about was what makes Woodbridge unique. And one of the features of Woodbridge is all, all of these all of these nature trails, all these hiking trails, all this open space. And part of it was. Uh, you know, to try to publicize this open space. 
and to make people, make people aware of it. Mm. I, I don't know if you're aware of it because it doesn't show up on the map, on this map. But down here, um, where is it? Down here by the ballparks, um, there's a ballpark this here. There is a scar of the Regicide Trail in the corner of this property where they have the old industrial um, development there. It's a very steep trail. It goes up over the Merritt Parkway and then it connects here and it comes out in the Dawson. And here's parking there. Is it a safe trail? Is that where someone got hurt? Is it a safe trail? Is it safe? I just know that someone, there was an accident on one of those trails oh, there. That I, to, I mean, you should take my voice guys on that trail okay. and we never, it, ever it, it's a, aware, of, aware of anything like that. So, in back the ball fields in where the, the uh, was a tennis center there, right. uh, but now they use it for soccer, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's in that corner. It's in that corner, right. right. And it goes, it goes right, right up along the Merrick Park. It's right. very steep. Um, so very hard to walk. You know, it's challenging to walk up. Uh, it's steep, but it's not impossible. No, it's not impossible. It's only steep for a short, okay. short yeah. distance to the way, the way down here. And then yeah. come up over the top of the Merrick Park. That'd be cool. Right. Down That's over the, the tunnel. Yeah. I, the, 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 you, what, what, actually, one thought the I... Native Americans used to... Chase the deer over. There, there is a, uh, yeah. a fence that runs to bound off this traffic from the Merritt Parkway. Um, and any pedestrian from going on to the Merritt Parkway before it enters the tunnel. And I, and I thought it might be an interesting yeah. if we, this thing to do is, is to put handrails on there to help people go up and down that trail. So, just. I don't think that's a trail for people to make handrails. <laughs> well, no, well, I know I came down it and, and there was danger of ending up on your backside yeah. as you walked down that trail. David, you were talking you, just David. a moment ago about the 2030 plan, right. the strategic plan. Um, is there any talk as part of that to do a build out analysis in terms of what the impacts on the town would be of all the zoning changes that were made, uh, I guess, a year, a year and a half ago now? Um, has there been any talk about that, having that, that analysis done as part of the 2030 plan? Um, you know, it's kind of, I think it's kind of touched on indirectly. Um, the plan that we have is, is looking at, um, it's looking at the, everything in the area in the village district and possibly building out that area. Um, I don't know if it's specifically part of the plan, but I can check on that too. It would be interesting to know. I mean, obviously, the zoning there changed also, but uh, just overall in town, what the impact of those changes in regulations are going to mean in the town, you know, for the town in the next eight, eight or ten years. Or it could possibly mean. Okay. Um, David, was that, was that it? Was that, was that, okay, good, thank you. We adjourned the meeting. Well, then you beat me to it, so. <laughs> Is there a second? I second that. Okay. And all in favor? I, remember this. I think we're done. All right, so we'll close our meeting at uh, 9.09.